Hello people, and welcome back to part 43 of Ilos, a modded city skylines build. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And uh, train station action, yes please everyone. How nice is this? <laughs> love, love a busy train station. Another train coming in here now as well, hopefully lots of tourists getting off. Do come and visit the town of Williams, which you guys very much enjoyed last episode. And this week I'd like to carry on developing Williams. Um, I'm really enjoying playing this rural theme. And currently, we've made it to 111,000 people without a single bit of forestry industry in the map. So today, we're going to change that. We're going to build a little mountain forestry reserve. We're going to have some production up in the mountains with some tasteful designs with some mods. And then we're going to sort of separate the processing and export down onto the country road to create a rural forestry build, which isn't something we've tried before. And with the mods and fusing and being able to create little complexes now, uh, this should be an extremely exciting build. So, let's have a look what we can do with some rural forestry in City Skylines. So first of all, let's go ahead and get our main uh, forestry build in place, of course. Uh, we're going to be using the two-lane country road for a fair bit of the infrastructure around today's build. It's quite a nice little one. Uh, so let's come on with our trianarchy off, and then let's go ahead and just slowly start meandering through the hills here. A few little sweeping curves will be welcome, I think. It's going to be quite an interesting little vibe to play with, I think, a little sort of rural forestry build, but we should be able to do a job with it. And then let's just keep this going straight. Tremendous. Cool. So we're going to have the main building, not too much focus on it, which is usually what we do with our sort of industrial areas. We really allow the main building to sit as part of the build, but today um, I do just want it to be kind of on the way up the mountain, just a little hut that you pass by. We can bring some prop detail around this later on if we wish. Uh, it does 100% need to be bobbed though, because those vanilla palms um, are technically illegal in Eyeless. So we will search for uh, some of our Douglas stuff. Just see which ones we're a fan of. Blends into the environment a little bit more, doesn't it? Cool. Okay. So because we're on a hillside, of course, the terrain is going to be a little bit awkward for us, but... Uh, hopefully nothing that a little bit of soften can't fix for us. Maybe even a little bit of level terrain there would be welcome. Yeah, so you just pass by the sort of forestry cabin on your way up to the plantations. And the, the cabin in the woods is a vibe on its own, isn't it? This place, this guy's waiting, ready to go to cut down some trees. And his little lime suspenders. Okay. Cool. So we're going to name this area as well, of course, after one of our wonderful Patreon subscribers. Uh, so we actually have uh, William Ferguson, uh, who is a patron, so Williams ties into Williams, of course. But we will go for Ferguson Forestry. Thank you so much for support, William. You might have a real secret blend of herbs and spices, mate. I hope you enjoy having this particular build named after your good self. Alright, so what I'm envisioning is that we're going to have sort of several plantations, several little plots around here. So I think I'm just going to stick to the small tree plantations for this. And then I also want to be bringing out a road here so we can start to position uh, some framework. So bring it out more than we need for right now. I'm going to place down our first extractor building here. Again, this is going to need to be bobbed because it looks horrendous. Let's go ahead and get rid of the beaches. Again, we will search for one of our Douglas firs. Uh, something pretty tall here. I'm a sort of envisioning Something a little bit like that. Yeah, that's pretty sensible for me, I think. So there's quite a distinct little vision that I want to bring in for our first ever uh, modded forestry build. And this is the aesthetic of uh, sort of repeated fir plantations where they're growing and harvesting fir trees. But at the same time, it's also surrounded by sort of an internal log yard where it's all processed up in the mountain. So we're going to see what we can do with positioning some frames to help that vibe come in. So just within these tree plantations, I want to have a large log yard in here. And we're going to need to do a little bit of terraforming again because they are going to conform to the terrain. Which is fine, but it's not what I want to happen for right now. So we'll push that out. That's all okay. Let's go ahead and grab uh, the node of this road and just bring it back down. And then we'll also grab this building and then bring it down to the height of the road too. There we go. And then any final inconsistencies that can just be leveled away so everyone's nice and happy. So then when we bring in more of these plantations now, 
Let's see if we have them uh, sort of facing into the internal courtyard and we can alternate their orientation at different positions so they'll get collected here this time and spin them around that one so they get collected from that side just so it's sort of dispersing the traffic either side of the frames. But then what we are left with once this yard fills up with logs is a little processing sort of facility, right? Just the aesthetic of all these really tall pines surrounded with logs eventually. It's, it's going to be a cool aesthetic anyway. It's a little bit underwhelming right now because the logs aren't there, but uh, we will we will get them in. Okay, and then you should also come down to the height of your friendly neighborhood dirt roads. Tremendous. And then you can just come out here. And then we can just let that aesthetic repeat. Let's go ahead and bring in another plantation. So that's going to be what? Five small tree plantations there. That should be enough to feed the forestry area, but I probably will develop another little one of these sites here. Uh, and then let's go ahead and get that desert evergreen belt. And then we really just want to sort of make this blend in uh, with the existing terrain. And then we can see where we've got that really harsh terraform lip. Uh, let's go ahead and push that out just a little bit more. Make it a bit more obvious and then we can just soften it out and then it should blend in a lot more with the mountain that it flows up. Something along those sorts of lines. Yes, there we go. So that's what we're after, right? This is what we're going to be doing for our production. Really simple configuration, five small tree plantations and a large uh, log yard. So quite fancy, quite enjoyable. Oh yes, and before I forget, we do have some American trucks. Big shout to Brassac for linking me these in the Discord. Uh, yeah, some American trucks and trailers uh, to now move around our roads. Uh, which is tremendously exciting, isn't it, right? Much better than the vanilla ones. The vanilla ones are still there, but we will see these occasionally now too. So yeah, big shout to Brassac for those. Enjoy seeing those moving around Alice's road network for the future. But wonderful, we're getting logs delivered now. So this is the vibe I want, right? This is your sort of spy sample screenshot for the episode. Very happy with this. Cool. So we've got some production sorted. Uh, this should be uh, now starting to produce for us, of course. We'll wait for this to uh, tick over and update once this comes in. But now I'd like to go ahead and grab some more of this country road. Uh, and just bring it down a little sooner than that. Go for about there. And then I just want to have a little gentle curve. Another little straight piece. And then we're going to have that there. So now I'd like to sort of build a little sort of sawmill facility that's in the mountains alongside the production. And then for our heavier production like engineered wood plants and biomass pellet plants, uh, we're going to move these down uh, toward the export on the main road. So let's have a little look at what we can do with a little fused sawmill complex. So I'm going to push all this out. Not worrying about any horrendous terrain lips at the minute, of course, they can all be detailed and reworked afterwards. We want to let the priorities, or let the assets take their priority for the minute. Cool. So we'll have that there. Then let's go ahead and place in another sawmill. So this is going to give us the ability to, to produce a decent amount of plain timber. So I'll have this over there. So let's see what we can do with fusing these assets together. Uh, in terms of creating some sort of larger, uh, more cohesive sawmill complex. So we could fuse the little sheds together like that maybe. How do we feel about that? Of course it's going to need a road connection, we'll give that in a second. But that's not too bad otherwise I don't think. It's giving us some nice open courtyard spaces here. Yeah, it's not too bad. He has a driving too, which is pretty nuts. I didn't think they'd actually drive that far. Uh, okay, let's go with that then. And then we're going to need to give a little one unit dirt road connection, of course. And we do just want to be continually using uh, Move It here just to make sure that all our nodes and little angles are messing about on the same angle. I think that's okay, isn't it? It's not too bad. Uh, we certainly shouldn't be forgetting about the wonderful world of vanilla zoned forestry because there's some very nice assets here. And um, we will be using a few of these today. So I do have this little asset of the workshop, which is a modern sawmill. Um, it is part of sort of a vanilla forestry build. And I think it's just going to sit appropriately with the actual industry sawmills, isn't it? Again, it's where exactly we want to 
uh, get this in. How about one on here on the corner? And we'll see if we can adjust it to fit the space. Something a little bit like that, perhaps. Maybe slightly more on the angle. Okay, I don't think I'm totally against that there. Then again, we can perhaps have this one positioned with its back here. So it does have a little log store on it, doesn't it? Yeah, there's like logs coming out of it here. So I guess it would make sense to actually have them kind of exposed to the sawmill courtyard. So again, orientation, even in a rural forestry build, is always the most important thing in pretty much any build. It really will make or break it. Okay, and then there we go. Let's bring all this around. Cool, and then pretty much paint away any concrete. Then once we have that in, again, it's just a case of uh, softening out any harsh terrain work that managed to generate during the initial placements. There we go, a little bit like that. And then we can bring that real heavy, uh, sort of evergreen forest brush back around it to surround it by the forest that it's harvesting. And hopefully now as we begin to piece these little facilities together, we can just see this little mountain sawmill uh, come in. It should be quite cool. Of course, everything's connected here. Um, if anything, actually, we do just want to uh, give a little bit of building spawn points to uh, this one here and then just shift its Y axis onto the road so it receives its deliveries. And then everyone's going to be tremendously happy by the looks of it. Right? Wonderful. So there's lots of little prop detailing that can happen around here, of course. Plenty of little planks. And a good shout for some forestry detailing is actually some of the assets here. Um, in find it like the two by twos will just spawn in as a load of planks but of course they are actually registered as zoned industry right this is technically a factory as the game reads but it's kind of preset props and now we have a load of cut boxes planks and things in and around the sawmills that are also helping servers so a little nice tip for uh, using forestry from a detailed perspective there Cool. Okay, so we now have some production, and we've got some early game processing here. Right, we can see things are coming in to be processed up. It's all very nice. Uh, and then let's come out now with uh, some more roads. So I'd like this country road to uh, extend down the mountain. So let's see what we can do with that. Let's go ahead and see where we can eye this up, and then pretty much a straight run down back into the national road. Yeah, a little bit of softening around there is going to be uh, fancy enough. I think we'll be happy with it. So let's talk about what we can do now with um, some sort of export designs and a main processing facility. Okay, so let's have a little chat about the cargo at Yard. So I do want a cargo export facility here, um, but the vanilla one's a little bit sort of too bold for what I want here. I don't really want the massive building on it. Um, so instead, we're actually going to use uh, the Airport Export Cargo Train Station, uh, this one right here, uh, which is a really cool asset. So let's go ahead and break the train line, because of course it's going to need to come through this area. Uh, and I'd actually like to place this on another little country road first of all. So let's bring out sort of a shape as to where we're happy to develop. Let's maybe come out this side here. I want to bring this road off on a fairly long angle for the time being. And then we're going to grab uh, this road right here, the little one lane country road. And then this is the road that our cargo train station is going to sit on. So we'll grab that. Let's go ahead and throw it about there. Should be pretty nice. So I think I'm happy with this little tasteful placement of uh, the airport hub. And it will work outside of an airport area as well. You do not need them within the airport areas to function. So let's complete this little one way loop. Uh, this can be welcomed back into the junction. I'm also going to bring this one up here. Let's go ahead and cross that over in there as well. So I'm really happy with all these little country roads and angles and a little bit of a kind of preview for the next series maybe. I am very much thinking of taking it only as a railway start. For those that follow uh, the wonderful Yumble TV, if you haven't checked out Yumble, do go ahead and check out some of his work. He is a one of the intersection geniuses, but he's made a map uh, with the thought process of having only a train station as the start. And I think that's a process and a little sort of theory we're going to apply uh, to our next series, which should be quite fun. 
But that is a conversation for another day. Let's resume to our little build here. So we're just starting to develop these little country sort of road network frames now. I think I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's pretty tasteful, if I don't mind saying so myself. So we'll have this here. Um, with this in mind, the sort of location of the rail yard here now doesn't really make that much sense anymore. It's probably going to be better to have it sit along this edge here. Uh, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and perhaps move this down towards the road a little bit more. That seems okay to me. And then we use move it to grab all of the nodes. So let's go ahead and bring these in. And then we'll just bring them down to the front. And then this one can slide down as well. And then we'll grab that segment and just bend it out a little bit. Yeah, so I think what we will do here is let's just sort of break all these connections and decide exactly what's going to happen. So again, we'll use move it to grab uh, nodes and props here. And then we'll just grab essentially the entire uh, rail yard. And then bring it over. Spin it around. Let's have this. So we could have it against the road on this side. I suppose. What well, I think probably here is more appropriate. So let's go ahead and rotate this into an angle that we're all happy with. Something like that. It should be acceptable, I imagine. And then we'll have that there. So I guess it's now sort of more appropriate sort of industrial train yard detailing, isn't it? I think we're going to be happy with that. Uh, and then we know that we love the aesthetic of a full warehouse yard. And again, we can orientate these against the back uh, of the cargo train station. Just by piecing them together like this. Okay, so we're happy with that there. Yes, please. And then we can go ahead and place in perhaps a second. Possibly a third. Something like that, okay. And then this is just going to really help expand all those cargo vibes. Uh, so with these here, I think I'm going to ask them to store a uh, forestry product from the zoned industry. Because of course, we'll be storing the industry's DLC uh, sort of resource um, in a log yard or a sawdust thing, right? Okay. This isn't too bad. I can definitely see where the angle of my road now needs to adjust to. I would like to come onto a guideline actually, yeah, and hit that rail there. Let's actually bring it off onto the next one, there we go. And then we'll have this run sort of perpendicular with the warehouses. And then it can come down there, is that too close? That should be okay for a connection I think. Yes, that's perfect. Cool, so let's go ahead and get those rail lines hooked back in. So yeah, really thinking of starting the next city after Ilos uh, as a a railway start, so no highways. It would be just a rail station at the start of the city. So let me know if that's something that you would uh, enjoy. I really enjoyed Yumble's video on it this week, sort of discussing it as a as a concept for a city. Uh, really interested in doing it. So get down in the comments. Let me know if you look forward to that. Right, cool. So I think one more asset. Uh, of course, we're playing with an industries build, so a unique factory is usually welcome. Uh, and the furniture factory is the forestry factory, essentially. I think if we just have this here, in and amongst all this sort of cargo and export detailing, then we can enjoy this together, right? I think that's pretty tasteful, isn't it? It's going to be really nice kind of sat here against the, the country road. It's just as a little kind of mini isolated rural desert export hub. And it's got reason to be here. You know, there's ore industry over in the corner there. And there's soon to be more forestry down here. So quite appropriate. Happy with that one. So we will also have it come up through this way, and we can do some pretty nice designs with uh, the rail now. So this is going to be the main line. We're going to bring this up by 30 units, and then let's go ahead and get a nice little happy curve. There we go, and then we can then just use this now to hook in um, all these little rail yard lines uh, into each other. Just like so, should be okay. A little bit of node control needed uh, occasionally just to sort it all out. Uh, and then again, we can sort of reinforce those really cool kind of cargo rail yard vibes uh, over here just by having that in. Uh, and now our uh, train line should go ahead and reconnect itself, hopefully. Game probably wants a little bit of time to sort itself out. There we go. Let's make sure that stop is still there. Yes, super. 
So we can see our passenger trains passing through this uh, little compound as well, which would be cool. And then over here, uh, where we have the national line, uh, I would also like to introduce another connection over here. So we can have uh, cargo imports come from both sides of the map, because currently uh, they only have access one way here. You're not going to be going there, are you? No, you're exporting. That's great. So I think I'm definitely going to surface paint a lot of this concrete away, but there is also another texture um, that I'd like to bring into the build. Speaking of though, let's go ahead and bring uh, this road right up here and then a little curved road tool. And then that'll just give us some more interconnectivity between different parts of uh, the Ferguson Forestry and uh, the town of Williams. Okay. Cool. So yeah, with the service painter, I would like to actually rid um, all the concrete away. Now you're going to have to bear with the sort of jankiness for a second, just why we talk about the process here. So sort of a central... You know, very compacted sort of sand vibe, which is what this gravel gives us. But then around that, I would actually like to use the extra landscaping tools to drop in uh, some ore resource. Um, because it's kind of like a dirted sand texture almost. And it works really nicely around sort of a export hub like this. Like it's sort of a little bit weathered, it's a little bit dirtier. So we're going to drop that in. So, you know, don't be afraid to use actual natural resources if you have the better landscaping mod to detail. Um, it can be welcome in certain places. So, you know, don't forget to try it out as an option if you're sort of coming up to maybe sort of a cargo import build like this. Okay, but just a really simple train yard configuration, export hub, warehouses, and a factory um, against all this country road infrastructure. Very much my vibe. Super happy with this. <laughs> Cool, so now we've got the export, let's have a look at some further processing designs and then we can probably head towards some detailing. And if you are enjoying the episode guys and would like to show some support and get something cool in return, why not have a look at some overcharged egg merchandise which is linked down below, including canvases of your favourite skylines, some bottles and t-shirts. Go check it out, it really helps support the channel. Can't stop watching this. <laughs> it's just... I don't know, I feel like since we started the town of Williamson, um, Egg's train fetish has really kind of become the only thing that he's interested in. Just obsessed with watching the trains move around this rural network. But anyway, we have an episode to make. So let's move some more terraforming. Uh, let's go ahead and grab a height that we're happy with. Because of course we're going to be playing with some larger assets now, so terraforming can hurt us. So we just want to make sure that most things are okay. Let's go for that lay there. Of course push it all back. Probably more than we need. Up to about here should be acceptable, I imagine. Cool. And now let's forest brush this away also. So, of course, we know that, well, long time followers of the channel at least will know that the pulp mill is um, one of my favourite assets. Love the pulp mill. So good. However, I think it's a little bit too industrial for here, right? This looks more towards sort of a refinery sort of vibe, doesn't it? And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just too big. It kind of really breaks the vibe that I'm looking to generate here. So for once in the forestry build, we are going to exclude the port mill here. But what I would like to do is talk about the possibility of some knee fusing. So we're going to use the biomass pellet pants to produce our paper for us. So we're going to use two of these. So let's spin one around. And we're going to, of course, they'll lose their road connections while we do this. But we'll, we'll worry about that uh, come the end. So yes, let's go ahead and see uh, what fusing possibilities we have uh, with these two assets here. It looks like there's a nice little opportunity perhaps where we can join uh, those two buildings together. We do want to make sure we're at the same height though, that is important. And then how do we feel about that? So we will now sort of serve two biomass pellet plants. I think that's quite tasteful, isn't it? Definitely looks like a larger facility, one larger complete building. And sits in very nicely across from the export hub as well, which is now getting use. Yes, please. Very nice. Tremendous. We will eventually see a cargo train come from here, hopefully. So, we got this in now. Let's see what else we have uh, to play with. So, there's also an engineered wood plant, uh, which I'd like in here too. So, let's come ahead and grab the little two-lane gravel road. And I guess it would make sense if you were hooked into here, wouldn't it? So, let's move you all over a little bit. Probably up to about there. Then we'll grab our little one unit dirt road here. Just come off all our snappings. And then we really just want to have this uh, come around the entrances. So 
go ahead and let's bring it up to there for right now. And then let's grab uh, the engineered wood plant. So the front of this asset kind of has like a little open courtyard on it. I'm thinking if we can kind of orientate it to the right angle, we can almost get like a complete little yard here, even though it's three assets that are actually fused together and of course helping serve the industry. Uh, we can create just a little open courtyard here, I think. Again, just give it a nice big dose of service painter because it's just sort of going to be all here. Of course, it's not going to be this horrific, but if we want a bit more. So, again, happy with that. The trains here are irritating us a little bit. We want to make sure we're possibly sat down there as well, though. Just going to grab the nodes of the dirt road and then bring them down to the height of the buildings. There we go. So let's go ahead and grab another one unit one and then we can start to position some further assets uh, against the road here. So let's go on to road length. So again, really want to sort of use the point of having some uh, vanilla industry, which is really important for the economy of the city to have these raw resources produced locally. Um, Ilos has had some severe, like really severely bad um, goods issues due to the fact I've waited to 112,000 people in order to get the first forestry build which is insane so we're going to have these little houses here and these are little uh, 4x3 generic forestry buildings and they're quite tasteful right you can fuse them together they sort of function as a little mini warehouse they've got some detail out the back of them so happy with those we'll definitely have these in uh, and then I want to see if we can sort of work on a little fused complex as well which will be uh, really fun so let's bring this one out onto that road. It can connect back in the road that goes up the hill, which is getting used now as well. Good to see. I think it probably will also upgrade this road into the highway one. Yeah, because we decided during the live stream on the weekend that this is probably uh, the more appropriate sort of American national road. Uh, like the one that we've got down here now. It sort of has that vibe, doesn't it? It's a little bit more consistent, I guess. So I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it now. Uh, we will bring in some asymmetry as well on the junctions in a second. But we can have all that as highway. Okay, so let's come back to uh, the fusing arrangements now. So let's go for two of these little boys. All right, these are really cool. Let's go ahead and grab one of them, spin them around. Uh, we can then just control them together so they make one solid unit. This has been like by far and away my biggest sort of love of um sort of modded cities is using move it in this fashion. Really cool. Just so good. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Right, so we'll have that one there. That's gonna be great. One of them will need uh, to be building spawn pointed. But for right now it's gonna be okay. Let's come back in to find it, and I'd like to place in this one now. So this sort of warehouse looking thing um has like chopped planks already been stored inside it so I think this would sort of make a lot of sense to have um, as part of this little complex so this little conveyor belt here is you know producing some sort of plankage something's going on and then they're stored almost immediately locally at this little warehouse before they're perhaps moved into the biomass pellet plant and so on and so forth you get the kind of general idea with that okay uh, and then let's go ahead and get one more in Good, good. We've already got that one in, haven't we? This one's not too bad looking, but I don't really want too many big buildings. We've already got a couple there, so let's not have that one. And then why don't we just have this one here, the little forestry 3x3 number. This should be acceptable, shouldn't it? So we'll have that there, and then we can use uh, that little one unit dirt road now. Just wrap everything up uh, in the complex. And then that sort of completes the vibe, doesn't it? And then, of course, any buildings... Uh, that do need that spawn point work, probably. Oh, that one's okay now. Uh, this one will need it. It just wants to be scrolled across so it gets its deliveries off the road. Uh, likewise with this one, just has to be scrolled. And this one should be okay as well. Right. And then again, once we've got those in, you can come in and place in these little 2 by 2 ones, which are essentially you know, preset prop detailing, but are going to fulfill that industrial demand and sort of supply. And then with some more prop details as well, come our detail and time lapse. Just look how good the vanilla forestry can actually look with a, just a little bit of move it and building spawn points as well, I guess, if you actually want this to work. But uh, just incredible. 
Really cool. <laughs> love, love modded industry builds. Everyone just uh, a real, a real breath of fresh air. Right, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It's coming together. I uh, definitely want some more storage down here for the bar mass plants, though. Um, so we could use the wood chip storage or the sawdust storage, but I don't really like the look of these assets. I would prefer just to have log yards. So I think we're going to place in uh, two small log yards rather than just a single large. Again, it's going to give us some more sort of detailing opportunities. So let's bring this one up into the middle. Okay, and then this one's going to come out here. I just want to position them so they're sat somewhat sensibly uh, against the biomass plants and these assets will take priority the road uh, will bend to the whim of these buildings okay so just aligning them up alongside existing infrastructure which is cool right this doesn't look too bad at the minute but we can make this look even better so let's come into network multi-tool and then we can use the unlock segments uh, option within this to actually unlock these little segments of fencing that are sat within the log yard itself because they're actually classed as networks so once they are unlocked uh, you can just delete them and then let's come ahead and grab in our own fencing just a simple bit of uh, forestry there we go and then we can link this up now and what it's going to do is open up that large sort of center log yard to now become an extra large log yard even though it's two of them that are actually fused together and um, just so cool <laughs> so good you would also do the same here with the ore fence that is around the edge of the biomass plants. You, know, you could remove one of them in the middle, which we might do during our D-turn time lapse. And then just have it as kind of one complete facility and without these fence divides in the middle. So just lots of cool opportunities with that, you know, just endless variations again uh, as well, which is always, always fun. Cool, so now we can bring this up to Sort of connecting with everything else you can uh, go up there that'll give you a connection uh, and then with this one here we probably just want to uh, grab the nodes of this road and then we can just slide this down bend this one out a little bit and then our road uh, can complete its journey through the production part of the facility and then you can sort of i guess just meander back over here and then any frames can now be trimmed off, surface painter can be tidied up uh, as and where it is needed. It's really just within this kind of like country road frame as to where I want that sort of compressed sand, if you like. And then same again here when it's not in the facility. Uh, we can bring that natural evergreen forest around the back of it now, which will really help it uh, settle in. And we'll have a little look at that in a moment. By in a moment, I mean almost right now. Yeah, we just sort of... Very roughly painted in, it'll of course be refined during the time lapse, but we can get an impression together. Yeah, and then maybe a little bit of it here too. Okay, and then there's plenty of little rural fence detailing to be had along this road now. Um, as we just come to enjoy this kind of rural out in the sticks industry export facility. Uh, so happy with this design. <laughs> it's just really cool, really hammers home a vibe, doesn't it? Okay, you can really get an impression of this when you're kind of sat um, in Williams as well. God, the parking is insane in Williams at the minute. Everywhere is full. Uh, do we need some more car parking spaces, I wonder? There's a lot of people on the roads too. God, yes. Looks like we may need more car parks. Oh, yes, look. We've got a little uh, cargo export truck traveling through town. That's the Rump Motel. Very cool. But yes, it's uh, very busy, apparently, Williams. Uh, all the car parks are full, which is which is good, but yeah, it might need some more. Uh, are you okay? Uh, yes, that's just the cargo export hub backing up, isn't it? You guys shouldn't back up too much, I don't think. You'd only really have to wait if you catch a passenger train, which they're not super frequent on this line, so that shouldn't lead to any permanent train traffic issues. That should be okay. I'm usually advisory against mixing into city cargo and... Um, sort of internal passenger trains together on the same line, but this is only a really short run uh, until they get back till the uh, intercity uh, exchange point, so it's not too much of an issue. But lots of cargo leaving, that is very good indeed. Okay, lots of export. 
Hey, let's go ahead and just complete this little back end of the factory here. Let's just go ahead and give it a nice thorough wrapping up with the country road. There we go. That's the edge of the complex there now. And I'm pretty happy with that as a general kind of production and or processing and uh, export facility. However, guys, there's the trains again. Oh my god, <laughs> so good passing through all this stuff. Yes, please. You might be wondering why I'm using the vanilla tracks. It's because these stations aren't compatible with Network Multi Tools Unlock segment yet. I doubt they probably ever will be. But um, yeah, maybe that'll be patched. But they don't register online uh, if you do change out their tracks with Network Multi Tool. So we're using the vanilla ones for the time being. But that does feel like a good place for a detailing time lapse. We're going to come back up to the main building. Again, lots of props around here. Uh, similar to what's already in, just to sort of expand the general vibe. Uh, and then just target these facilities, maybe a little walking path for uh, the workers to make use of. And then also, uh, just sort of, let's have a little look at the production, actually. We might not even need another production facility here. You know, there's a lot of forestry being stored up. Producing 32 tons of it, most of which is being processed into uh, plain timber. Which is fine. I'm also going to go the area uh, improve logistics as well. Uh, that's going to uh, increase the uh, capacity of extractors and processor buildings. Yeah, so detail this up. Usual vibes, prop detailing. Perhaps a little bit of fence around here and clear a little bit of the forest off and sort of accentuate some layers of terrain. We'll see what happens. And then same thing down here again, our usual uh, classic collection of some industrial prop detailing. It uh, will be welcome. And then lots of country national road detail along here, which is going to be tremendously fun. Uh, I really do enjoy doing stuff like this. We've got our stupid intercity buses coming back through again. Yeah, this <laughs> this happened during testing as well. So for some reason, um, these intercity buses love to come and take the path through the cargo hub here. Um, there was a little bit of an issue with intercity buses at the minute, so... We'll have to bear with them, <laughs> but we might just ban public transport on this road uh, so they can't come and do this. Alright, but some fun ideas to be had. Let's detail uh, the Ferguson Forestry area uh, on the side of Williams, and then we'll be right back.
guys, let's have a detailing review. So this has turned into one of my favorite little forestry areas. And before we have a look at the finer details, uh, just a note here as to how this build sort of flows and looks. It just feels super organic. I love the way that the road network has developed off of the main sort of country road. And then there's all these little sort of like forestry supporting roads. Really cool. Love the way this has turned out. Either way, let's have a look at the detailing. Uh, so some IMT action has happened along the main road with a little crash barrier and then some rocks and overgrowth pallets uh, around the edges of the export terminal, which has had another uh, warehouse dropped in. This is holding plain timber for the factory. And then all these warehouses here, uh, the small ones as the warehouse yards are holding uh, the raw forestry product from the vanilla game. Uh, which will help keep all of our generic industry fed uh, with the resource that it needs. It probably won't need any more now because these are all full and it's constantly being produced and exported. So this should satisfy the city's forestry needs for now at least. We've also dropped in one of the little cargo loading bay assets that we've used. Uh, these aren't functional, they're very much just aesthetic, but they make a really nice addition uh, to your rail yards and general export infrastructure. Uh, really cool also dropped in at uh, this track here in the station isn't getting used so i've actually just gone ahead and dropped in some uh, train props here as though there's a train uh, waiting and ready to be loaded uh, this arrow head and western one here but just a little train yard to complement any export facilities like a real keen favorite thing to do in ilos now a huge fan of how these look uh, and then lots of these stacked planks as though they've been processed and they've been cut and now they're ready for Exporting out, uh, you know, all the American eclectic build sites that need all this timber uh, for building their houses. And then some more forklift props and general boxes and industrial detail and over here where we've added a large rock formation into the junction. It uh, just sits quite nicely on the corner, I think, alongside some live oak greenbelt. I uh, did network multi-tool the fences off in the middle, so now we just have this complete uh, sprawling uh, biomass pellet plant complex. Uh, which looks really cool. It's also hilarious that every single forestry worker walks around with a chainsaw. It's like they're almost waiting to be attacked. It's like, don't worry. <laughs> the next time those trees come back, we'll get them. It's like they're constantly on guard. Yeah, never noticed that before. Uh, but either way, yes, this little complex now just sort of sprawls into itself. Also deleted the fencing off the front of the engineered wood plant. So again, this just flows now as like one continuous courtyard. Uh, where we come into some more... Uh, generic industrial props, these are all vanilla props, uh, and then sort of tripled up uh, these single planks to make larger sort of cut timber. Again, that's stored directly behind uh, the engineered wood plant. In the boundaries with lots of overgrown grass stuff, uh, some more container and indeed truck detailing happening over here as well with some trees and a bit of office space for administration. Alongside some truck detailing, so these are the trucks that we downloaded. Uh, just a little collection of the workshop. Again, big shout to Brassac for linking these. Uh, they're very nice. Huge fan of them. And then a little bit of parking uh, for the workers as well. And we can see the effect of having that open log yard now by removing the fence off of one of the assets. Uh, just fantastic. Really super happy with it. And yeah, I love the aesthetic of the logs piling up in these log yards from the industry DLC. So yeah, really cute little... Oh, there we go. Crazy snap camera. There we go. <laughs> yeah, really... Uh, cute little sort of lumber processing and export yard uh, with a unique factory in here as well. Possibly one of my favourite industrial areas. Like, I know I'm a huge fan um, of our oil refinery and how like industrial this looks. And you know, it has that very heavy industry vibe, doesn't it? There's all these little alleyways cutting through. But in terms of like an organic to sort of flowing build that sits around the existing networks. Like the rail that was here and the highway road. Super happy with it. Blended in just tremendously. Uh, where we then come up the, well, one of the main roads is also one that goes back into town there as well, back into Williams. Uh, we just have the main building, and I didn't really do too much to it, just bobbed. I do realise because the main buildings change every time it levels up, so it has to keep bobbing the trees off. But well, this is a level 3 forestry building. Um, and yeah, it's just cute. I just extended the pattern off with surface painter, so it looks like kind of a flush, complete driveway. But otherwise, that's it. Just a regular, happy main building. Uh, on the way up into the sort of area is fine and I love the aesthetic of the cabins in the forest uh, very much appropriate and furthermore we've just left our area with the one uh, production facility this is just five uh, plantations all sat around uh, a large log yard and what a vibe right just what a wonderful aesthetic that is just huge huge fan of that one 
and then it sits uh, within the forest here. So really cute. And then if we peek through the trees, uh, we will indeed arrive at the sawmill complex where we have that workshop asset that we've used before. And then a couple of industries DLC sawmills with another one of those assets. And then all these buildings here, uh, these are all functioning as a generic industry because they're just the 2 by 2 ones and the one by one zonings. This is how they spawn in. So it makes for some great little preset prop detailing and you can also use it to satisfy industrial demand as well. I like apparently like 30 people work here. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that's such a city skyline, right? But yeah, a little bit of fencing and just sort of teared it up onto its own little sort of cliff face and it sits really cutely sort of in the forest. You can almost tell what it is, can't you? Just like a little sawmill out there in the hills. And yeah, just a really cute uh, rural industrial build to enjoy today. Uh, really spread out and it just looks super organic. One of my favourite industrial builds I think we've ever done. And I think you can agree as we sort of look over the bird's eye view now. Uh, it fits really nicely uh, into uh, the rest of Williams. But otherwise guys, that is going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, likes, comments and shares below really do help me out. There's also links down to Patreon, Instant Gaming and Merchandise below if you'd like to help support the channel. And equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, then leave me a dislike as well. Like I said, really super mega happy with this build uh, as a whole. Just really organic flowing industrial area. Please let me know what you think of it down below. And uh, also really helpful for Ilos's economy. It has had to import its entire forestry demand up to 111,000 people, which is insane. So we definitely needed this build to happen. And uh, yeah, nice integration of sort of detailing. A use of the mods to create these fused little complexes, the industry's DLC itself and some base game vanilla in there. And of course this whole process can apply to an oil or an ore or a farming area. It's the same sort of process and we'll certainly be doing more industrial builds as Ilos grows. But otherwise I will shut up and I will leave it there. I would like to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.